If you're thinking of buying an electric car for the first time, you might have a few questions from engine size and battery range to how do you get the damn thing charged? Things are a little bit different than buying a traditional car. So in this video, I'm gonna use my experience of having just bought my first electric car and hopefully give you everything you need to know so you can go and get your own. We're all used to cars coming with ridiculous names with lots of numbers and letters in them, but electric cars really crank this up to 11. Because this isn't just a Kia e Nero. It's a Kia e Nero, 150 kilowatt, 4 plus, 64 kilowatt hour, 5 door auto, 2020 in silky silver. In and amongst all of that marketing gumph, there's really only two numbers that you need to be aware of or understand, and they are applicable to all electric cars. The first one is that 150 kilowatt figure, which is the size of the engine in the e-Nero. So that 150 kilowatts can get the e-Nero from 0 to 60 in about six and a half seconds. The other number is the 64 kilowatt hours figure, and that's the size or capacity of the battery. So the car can store 64 kilowatt hours of energy. The reason that's important is because it determines the range of the car. So roughly speaking, most new electric cars can do somewhere between three and four miles for every kilowatt of hour of energy they've got. And if I times that 64 figure by four, I get to 256, which is basically the real world range of the e Nero. Now, when shortlisting a car, the other kilowatt figure you're gonna to wanna to know is how many of those bad boys can you squeeze through this little charging point in the front or side or rear of your car. Now, when you're at home, the number that you can get into this isn't really going to matter because everything's going to be limited by the seven kilowatts that you're going to get for your home charger. But if you're out and you're charging at a super fast charger, which can deliver 150 kilowatts, if you can only get 50 or 100 into this, like you can in the Nero, then charging times are going to be a little bit different. So it's worth doing the extra little bit of research just to find what the max kilowatts are that you can get into the car. Whilst we're on the subject of charging, if you've got a driveway or some off-road parking, you're going to want to get one of these installed, a 7 kilowatt home charger. Now in terms of companies, there's lots out there who can do it for you, give it a Google, this one's from Podpoint, but make sure you check what's the best price at the right time for you. Make sure you also factor in the OLEV grant, which will give you a discount for getting installed and may not be included in the headline price. With public charging, there are lots of options too, from free but pretty slow, to expensive and pretty damn quick. The best thing to do is look at the options on the routes you use most frequently and sign up to one or two of those. To find my nearest charger, I like to use ZapMap, which you can see here, and I'll put a link to it in the description. It's really good because it aggregates all of those different networks into one place and it allows people to comment and chat and tell you if there are any problems with the chargers before you head there. But remember, plug in if and when you can at home to take advantage of the best rates. But enough about charging, what's it actually like to drive an electric car? Is it fundamentally different from driving the internal combustion engine one? Well, there are really two things worth talking about here. The first is speed. Because electric engines deliver pretty much instant power, you get pretty much instant acceleration, which means driving an electric car might be a bit more fun than you think. Woohoo! Yes. The second thing, well, that's maybe not so clear cut. Look, I, I need to be honest. I love your low running costs and your environmentally friendly credentials and your superb inbuilt technology, but it's, look, it's your regenerative braking. I, I'm just not sure if I like it. Regenerative braking takes energy from when you brake or decelerate and puts it back into the battery, giving the car more range. What that can feel like from the driver's perspective is that the brakes are a little bit grabby or the stopping is a little bit more unpredictable than it would be in a traditional car. But you soon get used to that in my experience. Also, most cars now come with some kind of adjustability on regenerative braking and therefore you can set it to a level that you're comfortable with. If there's anything that you're still scratching your head about regarding electric cars, please stick it in a comment down below and I will try and answer it in a future video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and of course, please subscribe to the channel so we can keep simplifying electric driving together.